a Muslim student has lost a high court battle against her school's prayer ban. The unnamed pupil claimed the ban was discriminatory. The school in question is the Michaela Community School in Brent, once dubbed Britain's strictest school. Head teacher Catherine Burble Singh issued the following statement. A school should be free to do what is right for the pupils it serves. The court's decision is therefore a victory for all schools. Schools should not be forced by one child and her mother to change its approach simply because they have decided they don't like something at the school. Last year we watched our... This is still Catherine speaking, by the way. Last year we watched our Muslim pupils put under pressure by a tiny minority of others to fast, to pray, to drop out of the choir, to wear a hijab... I have a duty of care to protect all of our pupils, but also to my staff. Uh, and we're still joined by Sam Lister from the uh, Daily Express. Uh, well, this is a significant moment. This means that, mm. uh, you know, essentially Muslim pupils do not have the right to pray at school if they want to. I think this is uh, a great victory for Catherine Bibble saying, I think it's... I think... There are lots of points here, aren't there? There is the very narrow issue of this pupil bringing this particular case about wanting certain rights on press. There's also a wider uh, issue about how institutions are letting down uh, people like Catherine Burble Singh, who are trying their best to um, create an environment that is suitable for all pupils to share a, a kind of productive daily life together without anybody having more rights than anybody else in that classroom. And she has had to go through the courts, and this should never have ever had to get this far. What she says in that school should go, and it, it's, it's madness that it ever got this far. But the ruling itself, I think, is a, a great victory for common sense. I think it shows that pupils, one pupil cannot dominate a school and for it, it can't be the tail wagging the dog basically as, as yeah it's an expression i use myself a lot actually this concept yeah. of tail wagging yeah. the dog and i think what was extraordinarily interesting about that statement is pointing out that uh, other muslim pupils themselves were under great yeah. duress to have to go yeah. along with this and that well perhaps they don't want to i mean we were talking earlier you know and jokingly about what labor might do if they come in and things that don't cost a lot of money yeah. well there's actually been a suggestion that they want to bring in more hate crime legislation and include God. Islamophobia in that, which would essentially, I think, legislate blasphemy in this country, but yeah. only against one religion. I mean, if that were the case, this court case could have gone in a very different direction. Yeah. Bring it back, bring back blasphemy only about a year after it got cancelled. We finally got rid of the blasphemy laws about a year ago. But there's been so a, a, bringing them back would yeah. not be a step forward, would well, it? Well, I mean, there was a report out this week, Policy Exchange, a think tank, a centre-right think tank, which says effectively we do have blasphemy laws now in this country by the back door. If you mm. look at the case of the teacher in Batley, uh, the case of the child in Wakefield who scuffed the Koran and then there were... Um, protests, um, you know, essentially we have these blasphemy laws by the back door. What we don't want is to have them enshrined into, into law. Mm. Um, no faith should have a, a better, greater status uh, in, in law than any other faith and every people should be treated equally. And I think Catherine Burble sing at that school, she, I mean, <laughs> I, I feel a slightly sorry for the pupils because they're all forced to eat vegetarian food whether they like it or not. Right, yeah. But there is a principle behind it, behind it that I think is actually very, very admirable in that because there are many, many faiths at that school, mm -hmm. Catherine Burble sing took the decision that pupils would all eat vegetarian meals so they can sit down together and yeah. share a meal. Mm. Nobody is having to say, I can't um, I need the halal option, table I need because... the kosher exactly, option, exactly. I'm a vegetarian. She doesn't want anything Buddhist. divisive, She wants praying. everybody to be equal, yeah. mm. and to sit together yeah. and to share a common experience yes. in the classroom. And I think that's admirable. Yeah. And I think even though that means pupils are forced to eat vegetarian food, whether they like it or not, that is a good thing. She's trying to treat everybody equally. She wants people to... Bring, be, be together. She's not trying to segregate. She doesn't want segregated groups of pupils in the school mm. hall, in the dining hall, in lessons. And I think that's a really, really important thing that we could learn a lot from. I, I mean, yet again, with this story, though, uh, when... The, I mean, you'd think when this child enrolled at the school, they knew the school's policy. Yeah. And the parents should have known yeah. the school's policy. But when they decided to start, uh, you know, having a go, um, the usual thing followed, which is yeah. bomb threats, yeah. death threats, yeah. threatening letters. I yeah. mean, it's just... That always ends up being for a very small minority of that community, a very dangerous and alarming last resort. This or first resort, actually, <laughs> not even last resort. But this is what I mean about the, the institutions letting down teachers, yeah. letting down head teachers, the same as the Batley teacher, who is still in hiding three years yeah. after that incident. I mean, how is that ever allowed to happen? How are protests allowed to happen? It's, it's it, you know, mm. these Disgrace. people are being let down. And, and these these 
uh, the, the way that these people are being kind of hung out to dry and left to just fight their own battles um, because people are afraid to take on protesters is, is just, mm. it's, it's, I, well, I feel quite... Well, I'll tell you, that the headmaster yeah. of Batley Grammar School at yeah. the time, I don't know if he's still there, but he should hang his head in shame yeah. because while those hired Muslims, uh, they weren't from the local community, they no. all turned up, yeah. no one knew who the hell yeah. they were, uh, protested furiously outside the gates because he'd had the temerity to try and educate his pupils about the Charlie Hebdo uh, tragedy in Paris by showing them a picture of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, the uh, headmaster immediately apologised mm. to those Muslims and the Muslim community uh, on behalf of the teacher. The teacher then had to go in hiding and what is it, three and a half years on? Yeah. He's still in hiding. He's a, he's, he's a married guy with kids. Uh, his life is ruined yeah. because yeah. everyone let him down. Mm. And uh, what B Catherine Burblesing is saying, uh, you know, we, we can't keep having these people no. suing mm. because there's something they don't like. Yeah. You know, suck it up. Right. We don't like this at our school, so we're going to sue. Well, you lost. Yeah, now you're going to have to put up with it, aren't yeah. you? And well, that's it. Everybody, you know, there's, every, there's something that every every parent can complain about, mm. I'm sure, uh, when they send their the, the people's uh, their children to school, because that is the nature of society. You know, none yeah. of us get our own way, do we? And that's I mean, an important lesson that people well, need to learn.